JG Lana. Uh, he's the CTO and co-founder at Seamless HR. JG's vast experience in software development, coupled with leadership in product design and development, makes him a critical player in the evolution of HR tech. <laughs> With over 25 years of experience, Deji has overseen the development of innovative HR solutions across industries, especially within the African tech ecosystem. Uh, it's a privilege to have you here, Deji. Uh, please, can you share more about yourself with our audience? Thanks. Thanks, Aima, for that introduction. Uh, my name is Deji, as Aima has said, and I'm CTO co-founder at Seamless HR. At Seamless HR, we are passionate about helping companies and businesses, especially in emerging markets, to be more productive, more successful. And we do that by deploying well-designed, world-class technology solution. And at Seamless HR, we provide end-to-end -end platform to help organizations streamline their HR processes, end-to-end, -end, recruitment, onboarding, employee management, payroll, all the works. So you can see uh, we sit on a vast amount of true or truest form of data, like people would say, because employee information are verified, uh, they will go through confirmation and do all that stuff. So that actually makes us a data company. And in doing that, to better streamline employees, I mean, organizations, processes, and make their employees more productive and in turn make the company more productive, we have to use AI. We have to leverage as much as AI as possible to give to help organization make the best decision and also have best insights into what's happening in their organization. I'm excited to be on this panel and I'm looking forward to an uh, amazing conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Deiji. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, Colin, uh, for those insightful introductions. Your collective experience in leveraging AI to transform HR functions is definitely valuable in this uh, conversation. So now let's move on to the question segment. Um, so, so the first question I have is, um, how is AI transforming the landscape of HR technology and what are the key benefits of integrating AI with existing HR systems. Um, uh, Barbara, I would love you to go uh, first. Yeah, sure, absolutely. And you know, as I was mentioning, um, we're really seeing such a blossoming of AI, HR powered technology, and it's amazing to see. And I think for our industry to continue to grow and evolve, what we really need to do is strive to foster that culture of openness and innovation with technology. And I think that begins um, by understanding just what that transformative potential of AI is. And I think it does go beyond just the routine automating of um, tasks. I think, you know, we've already seen, as we've already mentioned, that AI is, it's been shown to be effective in predictive analytics um, for talent acquisition. We've seen that it can help in sentiment analysis to gauge employee engagement. And, you know, in the future, I think I haven't seen it yet, but I think there's a potential to really personalise learning and development pathways. But I think the biggest impact that I think I've seen is really in the area of recruitment. Um, AI can now, you know, it's completely disrupted the way that recruitment used to be done. AI is now writing our job descriptions. It can draft our competency and behavioural based interview questions against that job description. It can um, go out and source potential candidates for us for that role that we're looking to fill. It can even screen the candidate's CVs at a huge volume, much faster than any human um, could do and then identify back to us which candidate um, is the best candidate for that role. So if you think about the number of hours that are being eliminated now that it took our recruiters to be able to fill roles for us, it's quite extraordinary. I mean, AI is even able to schedule all of our interviews for us now as well. And I suppose what that means is that HR professionals um, like myself, we, we're not, you know, getting bogged down in those really administrative tasks, but actually get to be able to do more strategic work. I think if, you know, you take that even further, um, AI tools are helping us analyse data as well from past hires, and then we're being able to predict uh, what candidates are more likely to be successful in their specific roles, who's going to be a high performer. 
Um, and that's not even to mention sort of the, the AI driven chatbots that we have that candidates in that recruitment process can liaise with to be able to answer any of their frontline questions or guide them through, you know, that, that process. But I suppose in terms of benefits, you know, what does this all mean? Obviously, better data driven decisions, as I mentioned. But and there's obviously the improved efficiency in automating those more um, administrative tasks. Uh, we could argue improved accuracy because of the minimizing of errors in regards to data processing around and, and you know decision making. Of course, cost reduction as well. And I think as a HR leader today, I think our primary responsibility is really nurturing that culture of continuous learning so that and, and digital upskilling really so that we can then look into the future and see well, you know, what are the roles going to be in the future? How, is, how are they going to be impacted by the introduction of AI? Um, and I think that's, you know, that involves us developing and promoting learning programs around AI literacy. And I'm not talking just specifically for HR departments, but really we have that responsibility for all employees across the whole organisation. Yeah, um, awesome, awesome. That's uh, really insightful. And, uh, you know, what got me was when you said, you know, saving up time, um, doing repetitive tasks. I know I... I, I dislike repetitive tasks, to be honest. And, you know, I always look for a way to automate, right, a repetitive task. But um, beyond um, that, you know, the time saved um, could also allow um, talent actually do creative and more strategic work, which brings more value um, to the business. And um, Colin, um, I would like you to contribute to um, the question. And uh, what, what would you have to say regarding how AI is transforming the uh, landscape and the benefits that it has? Uh, Colin, you're on, actually, you are, you're on mute, yeah. I always do that. Um, I think Barbara has been super comprehensive about, uh, about the impacts of it, which will allow me to be a bit more philosophical, which is a space I like to sit in, I think. so. Um, I did a computer degree back in 1990, which demonstrates how old I am. Uh, and at the time, one of the big management topics at the time, management of computing, was, you know, this computing power is going to free up lots of time for everybody. So because computers are going to take away all the grunt work from everybody, uh, um, we'll, we'll have more time for leisure, we'll have less time at work, it'll all be wonderful. And, you know, I was kind of promised a three-day week. We fast forward 40 years or 30 years, and we find ourselves actually working harder than ever. Uh, and, and AI has come a, a, along instead of the personal computer. And we're having the same conversations a little bit about what's the impact going to be. Um, but I think Barbara's correct in that it should free up HR departments and individuals in other departments um, time from some of the grunt work. There's an awful lot of effort put into pulling disparate pieces of information from different systems, plugging them together and trying to come up with some, a, a decent coherent story. Uh, and I think the, the real power of AI is it allows you to pull those disparate data sets together and come up with some sort of narrative. I think it comes with dangers. I do think it comes with dangers, but it will allow us ultimately to focus in on what HR is about. And what is HR about? HR is, to Barbara's point, about creating engagement, right? About creating engaged workplaces where people can be productive and happy. That's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. So anything that we can do to free up time to allow HR departments to influence that is good. And how would HR influence that in the round? I think it's by talking to people. So perversely, I think the AI will allow us to get back to more normal human behaviors, which is about building relationships, about talking to people, it's about understanding people. So that to me is kind of the overarching philosophical benefit of the drive to AI. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, fantastic, actually. Um, so um, let, let's come to um, uh, Deji, who has a more technical um, background and who is vested in building like systems that, um, you know, support HR function. So um, Deji, please, I would love to hear your thoughts about this. Yeah, thank, thank you. Uh, interesting. Uh, I've spoken to a lot of HR people uh, based on the value of my role and what I hear most of them, the most common pain is what Barbara actually said, which is recruitment. 
And maybe because of my uh, software, we're more focused on lead market to enterprise. So imagine you have a talent pool of application of up to 200,000, 700,000 people. Imagine sifting through that. I've seen uh, HR or people in culture, uh, personnel actually abandon their talent, talent pool and looking for referrals because sifting to 200,000 applicants is actually a lot of work. So you need AI to actually help you do that. And imagine you're able to do that, you sift to up to 2,000 applicants going through interviews. Uh, it's actually a lot of work. So AI, like Barbara said, supporting Barbara has actually helped uh, or is actually helping to actually streamline that process where you can schedule interviews, you can uh, organize and schedule the interview, actually take the interviews without HR being present. So you can add, imagine you have about 10,000 interviews happening at the same time and HR would actually use sentiment analysis, use a uh, recording of that interview, summarize it and help you actually sort and say, these are the people that pass interviews and these are the transcripts of everything that happened. HR is actually transforming a whole lot in HR. Uh, talk about pay, for example. HR is actually trying to set. I've seen people say, can a, an AI actually sets the uh, uh, the most or best pay, pay for an employee. And notes, best pay for an employee does not necessarily have to be more money. It could be more health insurance. It could be getting them access to uh, maybe a vehicle. Maybe some part from uh, some employees actually like fast cars so giving them that fast car might actually be a way to retain and engage them in the organization so ai is actually doing a lot and that's because sitting on a vast amount of data uh in the hr space you are able to monitor employees uh em employees work life to see their performance management see how they are recruited see when they are recruited see uh what sources they came from and what kind of things they are requisite their acquisition and bring all that together and even much more than that moving from one uh, technology system to another for example in, in our in, in, in our software i've seen an employee move from four companies and the employer has been lucky that the four company you move like he left one company to another to company b to company c to company d and and they are all using similar nature so i can track like the employee's life inf i mean uh, employee's graph like his information how he move his life manager uh, in this employer, we reacted to these disciplinary comments that was made for him and all that. With that, you have vast amount of information to make accurate and non-biased decisions in there. In the... Awesome, awesome. Um, thank you for your contribution, uh, uh, Deji. So, you know, uh, we, we we launched a tool uh, that was sometime last year. Uh, it's called Talent AI, and what this tool does is it screens candidates. You put in the role, the description of the role. You can also customize questions, really. and then um, the, the 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 system is able to generate um, questions that are relevant to that role, and you can also customize questions you want to ask. And, and there was a lot of backlash initially, right? But um, you know, there's this conversation about AI removing the human component of the recruitment process. At the end of the day, what um, people in HR want is to be presented with the best candidates and be sure that they are presented with the best candidates. And this is what I see AI tools doing, right? So um, there are lots of challenges we know, um, but these challenges have been resolved. and. Uh, you know, sessions like this, like this enable us have those challenges and also deal with those uh, challenges. So, moving on to my next question, um, and Colin, I will be throwing this to you first. Um, what are the challenges organizations face um, when integrating AI with their existing HR technologies, and how can they be addressed? So, I think I think you've mentioned the word challenges a, a couple of times there, and probably alluding to, to biases. You know, that there was a concern, especially of the earlier models, that they were producing biased results. Uh, and, and that probably brings up the whole point of the, or the potential answer to this question, is that the effective integration of AI tools is really, AI is as good as the data you train it on. That's kind of where it comes from. So you have to have solid data sources. You have to have access to those data sources. Those data sources might be disparate. And those data sources have to reflect the outcome you're looking for. And I, I think sometimes to get philosophical again, you know, sometimes we overuse the word intelligence in this. These systems aren't intelligent, right? They're guessing the next word. They're, 
they're, they're calculating data at a tremendous space. They're using lots and lots of distributed computers to, to harvest out small decisions, um, but intelligence it is not. So unless you're asking it the right questions, unless you're, you're integrating the data in the right way and you're training it on the right data, you're going to get funny results at the end of the day. So I think you have to consider a few things. Number one, the quality of the data. Uh, number two, I think the quality of the people using the AI tools, you know, have you given them permission to be confident with AI? Have you given them training to uh, uh, address and assess whether the AI is producing sensible answers or not? Have you given them the empowerment and the knowledge to say, well, hold, hold on, that looks a bit smelly. Let's, let's not rely on that straight away. Let's go back to, to see what questions are asking it. Uh, and then how, and how are we judging the impact and the effectiveness of that? Because, you know, what KPIs are you using to measure the intervention of API? So uh, have we reduced the time to hire? Has the quality really increased? Uh, are we getting better over time at finding decent candidates, whatever it is? And, and, and unless you're sort of setting yourself those base marks, regular base uh, uh, lines regularly, it's hard to understand what the process is. Otherwise, it just becomes the next shiny thing. You know, it's, it's difficult to assess uh, uh, whether it's actually having a business impact. So I think that's kind of where my thoughts go in terms of integrating AI into day-to-day -day aspects. Awesome, awesome. I, um, I think, Colin, you've um, touched quite uh, a vast point. I, I know other uh, speakers would have um, something to add to this, but because of time, um, I would want to ask a different question for um, Deji and Barbara, but you can also chime in based on what uh, Colin has said. Uh, so, uh, Deji, this question is directed to you, um, knowing that you're technical, right? And um, what we look out for as business people is productivity and efficiency, right? So we also know that um, this comes at a price, right? And, you know, concession. So how can AI be effectively integrated into existing HR technology systems? Um, yeah, Deji, so over to you. Thanks. Thanks for that question. And yeah, I have things to say on the challenges, but I will talk about this maybe because of time. So uh, I know if there's a lot of buzz about AI and people are saying, oh, I have a lot of data. I'm sitting on this amount of data. Uh, and how do I bring in AI to this? And it, it comes from the challenges, right, which uh, Colin has touched on. One is the data itself has to be as clean as possible, has to be organized, and has to be ready for AI-driven analytics, right? So first off is to clean up your data, ensure that it's clean, it's well organized, and it's as, it as true as possible. Uh, because you could have data from different sources that are not correct, or maybe you are using different systems. So consolidate them into one. That's one step. And other step would be actually to define a strategy. Like, what's the objective? Why do we want to use AI? What are we trying to achieve? Just saying we want to use AI because we want to use AI would you will just be confused with because there's so many tools out there. There's so many, you've mentioned one that you are personally championing. There's so many tools, there's so many LLMs out there. There's, and I'm sure a lot of cloud technology, AWS, Azure, they're all knocking at your door saying, oh, come integrate AI. Oh, we have the best tool. I've seen someone say you can integrate AI in 10 minutes, some say five minutes. As it's until when you get into the conversation, you now say, oh, it's going to take quite a while. But they say, well, we have all the tools, we have the pipes and all that. But have a clear objective, a clear strategy of what you want to achieve and start in bite sizes. Like there's a lot to do, but start with a definite objective and say, this is what we want to do. Do we want to improve recruitment efficiency? Do we want to enhance employee engagement? Do we uh, want to have access to more data analytics to enable our line managers to make better decisions? What do you want to do? When you do that, select the best tools for you. Similar HR is one of them. <laughs> and also talents for AI is also one of them. So select the best tools that are API friendly. I mentioned the word API friendly so that you can get as much API as possible and you can integrate to your existing tool, to your HR tools, and also maybe to your core business application, maybe your uh, your banking tools based on the industry that you are, that you can integrate those data so that there's no manual, somebody uploading an Excel sheet, someone the, uh, uh, still cleaning the data, everything is all synced together because data integration is also a very critical critical step. And once you do that, 
adoption is also a problem. It's also a major challenge. So you have to carry the stakeholders along, both the users, management, executive, continuous user training is important, phased implementation is important to ensure that there's huge buying. Because if people are not using it, you could have a great tools that people are averse to, or maybe some people are scared they might take their job and just decide not to use it. So adoption, selling the benefits, selling the object, uh, objective is also good. Awesome, awesome. That's um, really, really insightful. Um, so so I, I got to know recently that there's also a process of shopping for the right tool um, where you um, discover um, how the data was created, how, you know, how that integrates with your tool, um, transparency and all of that. So um, now moving on to my uh, next question, and this is for you, Barbara. Uh, by the way, you can also piggyback on um, what Colin and DG has said. And don't worry, Colin, I'll give you uh, a chance to piggyback on what um, they've said, right? So um, what ethical considerations should be taken uh, into account when integrating AI with H into HR technology? Yeah, and I think we mentioned a couple of them before. There's bias and fairness. I think they're the key concerns in regards to AI systems because, you know, they can inadvertently perpetuate those existing biases, as Colin mentioned. Um, and if they're trained, if they're trained on that bias data, so that's definitely a consideration and something we need to be aware of. Uh, you know, and there's that old saying sort of rubbish in and or rubbish out. Um, I think privacy and data protection is also crucial. Um, so businesses are going to need to implement robust security measures to protect sensitive personal data um, when it's being collected or processed by AI systems. Um, and also, as Colin mentioned, you know, we can't remove that human element. There should always be human oversight and accountability in any AI data making process. It shouldn't just completely remove all of the, the human judgment, especially when we're looking at, you know, critical HR decisions. Um, I recently went to the RE, which is the governing body of HR in Australia. They had a, their annual convention in Melbourne, and we discussed uh, the potential of AI on employment and job roles. Um, and so I think we need to plan for and also manage the upskilling and reskilling of our workforces. You know. AI is, there is a potential there. We talked about recruitment. We talk about talk about all the efficiencies on that recruitment side. Um, and there could potentially be job displacements. So we need to, as a business, I think we have that duty of care to our employees to ensure, ensure their employability into the future. Um, and so we need to be upskilling and reskilling them. Um, one of the speakers at the conference uh, mentioned that in five years time, the skills that we have will be redundant so I think we need to be aware of that and um, part of the ethical practice of bringing in AI and uh, adopting that, that innovation and moving with technology is also considering the human impact of that and making sure that we're looking after our employees uh, during that process. Awesome, awesome. Um, thank you very much for that uh, contribution. Well said. Uh, Colin, I don't know if you have anything to add to wrap up or piggyback on what uh, Barbara Digi has said. Uh, no, no, I think they were both very erudite and clear. I think it's um, it's an interesting time, isn't it, in the, in the development yes. of the business. And, it, and AI, AI is already losing a little bit of its luster, isn't it, which is quite interesting. You know, the stories of, uh, of big locations and big investments are sort of dying out uh, a little bit, which is often the way, you know, you get this lump and then you get the acceptance again. Um, but I, I think the key thing for me about AI is it's, it, perversely, you can use AI to clean up the data that you used to train AI on, right? So it's, it, it, becomes, it becomes a very interesting area. I, so I think the, the perversity to me is, it's almost going to eat itself in a way. You're going to, AI is going to be battling against the AI uh, uh, to, to, to try and find the business use cases that add the most value. So we're going to use AI to source candidates, and whether that's just a mass data dump for finding CVs and reducing them down to a manageable amount or interviewing or whatever use case you've got, the candidate's going to be doing the same, right? They're going to be using AI to create cover letters and create CVs. And create, and create responses. So, so what, what what are you actually getting? Are you getting a candidate, or you're getting an AI version of a candidate? And and that's going to create some ethical issues as well in the future. 
as to what's going to happen. And I think there's a more uh, a broader discussion to be had is how can we make this benefit humanity, right? How can we make it so that so that we're all benefiting, whether we're in a tech space or got a great job or, or unemployed, how do we all benefit from this AI revolution? And, and, and if it is machines against machines, great. And will we get that three-day working week I was promised 30 years ago, you know, where, where, we, where we can write poetry and look at the stars? That, that, that to me, would be the glorious future of AI, if we can manipulate things that are creating value while we're sleeping or rowing or dancing. Yes. <laughs> well said. Perfect illustration. Perfect illustration. Yeah. So um, it's been really, really um, awesome to have um, all of you here. Um, this is the wrap up. Um, thank you, DG. Thank you, Barbara. And thank you, Colin, uh, for um, coming through for this session. And to our audience, um, thank you for joining us for AI for HR 2024. And um, until next time, um, have the best of your day, evening, or afternoon. Thank you. Bye bye.